Uh, there was another teacher. She went into great detail on it. A, a very excellent lesson. That's natural for the hand to do that. It's just natural. That's what you're trying to get. When you're playing the guitar, that's the natural hand position. So what you want to do is somehow or another get this knuckle almost perpendicular to the finger. It's almost perpendicular to the finger. The hand hangs. Okay, old school, new school, you play like this, and that's a whole different uh, thing to do with the fingernails, etc., etc. It's not wrong. It's, it's, it's perfectly fine. It's going to give you a different tone. You, when you play with the old school, you're playing off the very point where the fingernail meets the flesh. That's where you're playing. That's where you're getting the tone. You're going to get a, a much mellower sound, or you're going to get a different sound. Whether it's better or not, that's, that's subjective. You're getting a mellower sound. I can get a rigid sound. I can still get a, a very rigid sound. However, a, Really, the only way to get that round, fat sound, I'm, I'm playing too hard, is to play where the, the nail and the fingers uh, meet, right at, right at that point. So, uh, the right hand, uh, what you want to do, as if you were dead and somebody came over and, and lifted, up, lifted up your hand with a pencil or something like that, they'd go like that, and your hand would hang like that. So, that's natural. It's not... It defying anything. It's natural for it to do that. So you're just turning this slightly, keeping the fingers curved and extending the thumb out. There it is. If, if you're looking at that, let's see. Ha! If you're looking at it top view, it looks like that. As I move to the fifth string, it moves down. As I move to the fourth string, it looks like that. It's hard to get the views here. Uh, that's what you're looking for. Here's my fourth string. If I'm playing from the fourth string, it, it forms kind of a, a, a small angle. There it is. If I'm going fifth string and now sixth string. So I'm getting this concept where I can play, play six strings. You're not going to get six strings at once. You're going to get a, a close facsimile of six strings at once by going like this thumb is opposite from the first finger. It's not going to hit the first finger. So you're getting that motion. So how does one uh, adjust for that? Well, uh, if you use your frets over here and, and, and move this up, you'll see that the thumb is on the sixth string, it's hitting one fret. On the fifth string, it's hitting another fret. On the fourth string, it's hitting another fret. That kind of gives it the angle. How do you get that angle? You have to be aware that many, many things are going to change the angle. That's what you, you need a teacher for sometimes. Or if you're going to be your own teacher, which I do uh, think you should do, what you must do is somehow or another realize that nothing is cut in stone. Every motion you make, if my hand's like this, my finger's going to, my thumb's going to go straight. If my hand's too high, my thumb's going to go at an angle this way. It's going to go behind the first string. If my hand is flat this way, it's going to hit that first finger. So there's many, many, if this will change it, this motion, if it's too flat that way, that's going to change it. That moves it. So you want to keep this hand limber, oh, limber like the left hand. The left hand, essentially, if you can get the left hand to look like the fingers are crazy glued, and that's the same thing with the right hand. If, if you got a balance and it looks like the fingers are somehow or another crazy glued to the guitar, the tips of the fingers are crazy glued so that no matter where you're moving the fingers, you have the balance. That's what you're looking for is, is, that, is that motion where the, they're absolutely uh, center of gravity. Now, now the same thing occurs here. You're looking for that motion where you can get the thumb to work in, in such a way that it's naturally going to move in this angle. Any change from that, from uh, 
an optimum hand position that's going to change. So how do you get that optimum hand position? In order to get that optimum hand position, you want to maintain that this knuckle is more or less in the same line with the finger. That knuckle is more or less in the same line with the finger. Okay? I'm referring now uh, to free stroke. I'm, I'm doing a free stroke. Okay? Rest stroke is, is something different. Uh, to sum up a rest stroke, a rest stroke is coming from a free stroke position. A good rest stroke, that knuckle is more or less perpendicular to the end of that finger and you're doing a paintbrush effect. You're letting this finger roll. It's going to roll over. Okay, my strings are very low because of the broken finger I'm, and I'm pressing too hard to, to get a buzz, but you can get the, the general idea. That's what I'm doing with the, with the rest stroke. It's, it's rolling. I'm playing off the position. If you play in the middle, you get what's called a hiccup. Ray would call it a hiccup note where I'm going like this. You hear that? So you're trying to get it where it matches where the flesh and the nail meet. That's what you're looking for. To put it all together, uh, you got the uh, Pasco Roach uh, School of Targa. School of Targa is really just a book. It, it's I don't I don't know what the School of Targa is. It's, I got this from Ray. It's it's old school. A lot of players use the same thing. Uh, I call it School of Targa. But who knows what what the School of Targa is? But in that book, what he has is the bar chords. He starts with bar chords, and again, instead of staying in the middle of the neck. He starts in first position. First position is very difficult for beginners. Beginners need a lot more guidance. So this is more for people that uh, uh, want to get a little more insight into the whole uh, Pasquale Roach book. And what essentially you're doing with the Pasquale Roach book is you're placing the fingers as needed. I have my third finger, my pinky, my second finger. So I'm placing them as needed. And I'm finding that balance. That's very difficult for a beginner to understand that in first position. But that's what you're looking for. I'm placing the fingers as needed. I'm resetting the balance each time. There's your bar chord. Okay, referring now to the bar chord. Uh, before my finger was busted, I used to play off the tip, if I can remember correctly, and it was curved. It was I, I saw another lesson uh, on the bar chord, and it, it, it was different, but somewhat similar. Uh, bear in mind that the bar chord, you want to play off the side of the finger, this side. And you want it curved, somebody said like an eyebrow, okay? So you, you have a curve like an eyebrow. I'm only using the pressure that's needed to play the chord. For example, if I'm playing a ball chord here, the only pressure I have is one uh, first string, second string, sixth string. These strings, I'm not even wasting the energy to put 